there are various principles that help guide practice. That is, methods that we can use to problem solve and develop a high quality product. The first of which is divide and conquer. This technique is taught all over the place in, in business classes and programming courses, etc. The idea is to break a large problem down into a series of smaller problems that you can work towards solving. The smaller it is, the easier it is to manage the problem. This is also called a separation of concerns. You might think about the old adage, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. Some problems are just too big to be conquered, so break them down to more manageable problems. You should realize that you may need to break those into sub-problems and even break them down further, repeating this process as many times as needed until you can work with that problem and solve it. The next is to understand the use of abstraction. Now, abstraction is to simplify a complex information system into something that can be conveyed into a single sentence. If you can't convey it into a single sentence, you may need to divide and conquer and break that complex piece into smaller parts that can be conveyed into a single sentence. The next thing you want to do is strive for consistency. Consistency can be found in design models and programming tools that are used and programming methodologies and libraries, user interfaces, etc. The more consistent you and your team is, the better your memory for how things are supposed to work are going to be, because all you have to do is remember how do you always do it. Also, this will improve communication with your teammates as you're all using the same terminology and methodologies. Focus on the transfer of information. Information is going to flow from one section of an application to the next. And this information must flow smoothly and without a loss of data. With larger and larger and more and more complex applications being built, this is an important process to not only learn, but to do well. APIs, libraries, and more will be used to help facilitate this. But in the end, it is still up to you. The next thing you want to do is build software that exhibits modularity. This is putting a separation of concerns into practice. You're going to build small, easy to write modules that can easily be interconnected. That interconnection is facilitated through that flow of information and data transfer. However, there's an added benefit to using the modules, and that is they'll allow easy reuse throughout not only this project, but potentially others. Remember early on we discussed during planning, we wanted to see if we'd ever seen problems like this before? And if we had, hopefully we could reuse that knowledge and maybe even those modules. If you build things in a modular component methodology, it makes the development of future projects faster and easier. And the same idea, look for patterns. This allows for a shared language to be used between developers. And when possible, represent the problem and solution from different perspectives. In the end, when you're developing a project, always remember that someone is going to have to maintain this software. Always think to yourself, what if I'm the person who has to maintain this project? If you are not frightened by that statement, then you're on the pathway to writing good, high-quality software.